Right guys, today I'm back with another video, with fourth time running without the mic not working, well the mic is working, which is good, hopefully it's working on this video. Um, today we're finally talking about, I mean we've already made a video about it, but we haven't done a proper review on it before I sell it. The Honda CB500X is a 2014 one, I think, 2015, 2014. And look at the number plate, but then I have to blur it out. And that's effort. Four Honda panniers, uh, center stand. I think that's the only mods. I bought it just like this. And if you've watched my other video, which is in the card on the top right corner, you'll be able to know that I got it for a super good deal because the dealer put up the wrong price for it. Right. This is a fantastic bike. It is a fantastic bike. So if you want to buy one, buy one. There are no reasons why you shouldn't buy one of these. Except if you want something more powerful, then don't get this. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Right, I always like to do this before I do a review now, or a, 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 a first impressions. Yes, I'm young. Um, you probably don't think I know anything about bikes. You probably, for someone that's watching a video like this, you're probably a little bit more mature than I am. Um... And you probably already clicked off the video because of that stupid intro and you think I'm really young and dumb. And, which you're not wrong. But I have been riding bikes for, God, seven years now. And this is my 11th motorcycle. So I've had a bit of experience and I've ridden, God, I wonder how many bikes I've ridden. I'll put the number out on screen. Right. But I'm going to try and be completely honest I'm not biased at all because I've had Suzuki's, Hondas, KTM's, I've had all sorts of brands so I'm not biased to this bike at all. So I can give you a full opinion, no one's paid me for this, this is my own bike for now, I am selling it. I'm only selling it because I don't need it anymore and for me, uh, this I bought this to do a job on, I don't have that job anymore so I don't need it, I don't need to use it as a mule. Because this is what it is, it's a donkey, it carries stuff. Now that's out of the way, we're going to talk about the bike and how good it is. Because it's a fantastic bike. Right, I was going to start this video off at a petrol station. Being, you're not going to visit one that often on this bike. Because that is one of the main reasons, as I said in my other video, why I bought this bike. And I just want to say, I'm in a really, if you can't tell, I'm in a really good mood today. The sun is starting to finally come out, it's been raining earlier. I'm hoping there's nobody in these cars, because if there are, I look like a tit. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, the sun's out, as I said, and the tax man owes me money. <laughs> I got a letter coming through saying they owe me money, so I'm like, cutching, great day today. Yeah, as I said, you're not going to go to the uh, petrol station that often with this bike, but you get an average about 200 mile range with the tank. Um, specs will all be down in the description, and I'll show them on screen as I go through it. Yeah, you get about a 200 mile range, and you get in between 65 and 70 miles to the gallon. Which is pretty darn good for a 500. Now, riding position. As you can see by the riding position, it's very laid back. I'll get on the bike. Let's pop these on here. Right, that is the riding position. Body is straight up. Arms are... Well, I've, got li I've got quite long arms, but I'm quite short, as you guys know. Uh, arms are pretty, I mean, it's pretty much like sitting on a, an armchair, really. Rind resistance with this, for me, isn't too bad, because I'm quite short. The wind hits right at the top of my helmet. But if you're anything taller than me, and I'm 5'6", I think, anything taller than that, that's just going to, the wind's just going to hit you straight in the face. So, taller screen is definitely advised. Seat height. 810 millimeters i believe which isn't too bad as i said i'm five six and let's show you might get back on the bike now uh if i flat foot this foot i'm about an inch off the floor of my heel on that foot so it ain't bad suspensions doesn't sag that much when you get on it like a dirt bike would like my ktm but it's not bad Smaller riders, I don't think you'll worry too much because it's quite a light bike as well, so you can chuck it on one leg. It's 192 kilograms, I believe. So it's not that heavy. Some people would say that's heavy. 
I mean, I've got panniers and everything else on it. I'm small. I don't have a problem with it. I haven't dropped it. Um, and I've, I've had to do all sorts of manoeuvring and things. You could take these things off-road. You can actually get a CB500... Ooh, is it XR? I'm not sure what it's called, but it's an off-road version. More suspension travel. Um... Uh, what else should you get on that? Some other bits. Uh, but if you're interested in that, go look at them. Don't look at this video. Talking about the, uh, off-road version. These tyres that I've got on here, Pirelli Scorpion Trail 2s, which are, I believe, a more off-road based. It doesn't look like it. It looks quite like an on-road tyre. But what I've heard is it's more, I mean, it's got trail in the name, uh, an off-roady tyre. But, God, are they expensive. I paid £120 for that front tyre. Normally, that's what you pay for a rear tyre, but that's just the front tyre. I can't remember what I paid for a rear. That's quite expensive for a tyre. So, tyres can be quite expensive, depending on... Obviously, that is a more expensive brand, but tyres can be quite expensive for this bike. Maintenance intervals is... God, I've forgotten the number. On screen, now. Um... But I know it's pretty good for this bike. It's pretty good. I actually was speaking to someone the other day who has done... They have a 2017 version of this. And they've done 54,000 miles on it. So it, it, their bikes will last. And it, they, they are pretty much bulletproof. Now what can you get for this bike? You can get all sorts. As I said, taller screen, panniers, centre stands. Uh, obviously protection bits. Fender extenders exhaust and i'll tell you it sounds pretty good with the aftermarket exhaust it's a parallel twin sounds a bit like my r3 um so if you want to hear an aftermarket exhaust from my r3 go have a look at an m4 on that and it was brutally loud um but it sounds pretty much exactly the same we're going to talk about instruments in the dash let's go on to that you can actually get a bar that goes along here to fit a sat nav and things which i think is a good idea um instruments pretty basic i mean this is a budget bike, so you're not going to get modes and lots of fancy stuff. Kill switch. Hazards. I always like bikes with hazards. Um, starter, electric start, headlights. This is the one thing I don't know and I, I don't like. And if you don't know about Hondas, they always do this. The horn is above the indicators. Don't know why. Until you get used to it, it's a bit of a pain in the bum. Because you go to hit the indicators and you hit the horn and people look at you. But, that's, I mean, it makes no difference, does it? Cheap levers. Mirrors actually work, which is always a bonus. You got <laughs> basic bulbs. I believe the new version actually has LED stuff, which is quite good. But you got basic indicators. Basic, 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 basic. I've done all the bits I wanted to do off the bike. We're now going to get on the bike. And hopefully, as long as I remember, we're going to talk about the handling. The power, the top speed, brake, yeah, <laughs> I've already forgotten, but I'll remember as I go along, I'm sure. Um, single disc in the front, single disc in the rear for brakes. We'll start off with the brakes. You've got ABS as standard, I believe. Oh, the gearbox, that's the other one I wanted to talk about. And look at that turning circle. That is one good thing about this bike, is the blooming turning circle it is a fantastic. I'm actually going to go this way and show you the church I was on about. And if you follow me on Instagram, which you should be, and if you're not, go follow me on Instagram. I've taken a couple of pictures here. One recently on this. So go and like it and tell me you were sent from the video. Right. Brakes. Um, brakes aren't too bad. They're definitely not my hypermotard Brembos. They're very much on par, if not slightly better than my Yamaha R3s. So yeah, brakes aren't bad. Uh, rear brake works, and I think the rear brake is quite good for a rear brake. Uh, coming off the Jixxer, where it's pretty much non-existent, for what well, I found it was. Other people have said they've had really good rear brakes in their Jixxers. My Jixxer rear brake wasn't great, but it probably had so many miles on it, it probably needed a rebuild on the brakes, on the caliper. Um, but yeah, brakes aren't too bad. They'll stop you in time. I personally don't get along with ABS. I know that sounds dumb. Um, and I know it really does help in situations. I just don't get along with it. When I when I brake, I want to brake. And I think I've learned... I, I've always had bikes without ABS. 
or quite a lot so I've used to not having ABS so I, I'm used to being able to stop quite quickly without it does that make sense but I think if it's the other way around when you come from a bike learn with bikes with there's always had ABS and then don't go on something that hasn't got ABS it can cause crashes like this shit and he's dropped it shit well we're just coming down here and uh, the traffic's kind of backing up and stuff and uh, we had to jump on the front brakes and uh, he's gone a little bit too hard on my girlfriend's 125 and um, just locked up the front Obviously I can see this has got ABS and it says this is the only bike he's ridden. So I know you, there's a lot of people out there that say ABS is good, ABS is bad. Maybe a bit of fuel for fire for, for an ABS bike being bad because this might be the first ABS bike he's never ridden and that front brake's locked up on him. Um, yes, I stole that from riding with Tom, but I remember it. So uh, thank you riding for Tom and please don't sue me. Power, power on this baby. now. As you probably expected, being a parallel twin and um, being a 500, most of its power is down low. Anything from, well, I say that, yeah, anything from about 4,000 to 7,000 is its top, which sounds quite high up, but it only revs to 10,000. And once you're in fifth, sixth gear, it kind of dies off. Top speed, now I'm quoting this, is 125 mile an hour. You're not going to be doing 125 mile on this, I guarantee it, right? Personally hit, I think, 115 or 110 on closed roads, on a closed circuit. You're going over, so I'm going to be a bit cheeky there. I mean, as you can tell, plenty of overtaking potential. And one thing I know a lot of people do with these bikes is actually down gear it so they have more top end. Because uh, this basically is a commuter bike, let's be honest. A lot of people use this to commute on and it's perfect for that job. But if you're doing a lot of motorways and stuff, I definitely recommend down gear on it. So put a, a bigger sprocket on the front, should I say, or a smaller on the rear. That's what I mean, like down, I don't know. You know, you know what I mean. If you, if you don't research in about changing gear in to make it basically to make it more uh, at higher top speed but less acceleration because I think that's the problem with this but it's very torquey but it doesn't need to be uh, I think more people are going to tour on this bike you know you can get all these panniers and things for it uh, but power 47 brake horsepower so it is A2 legal um, and I think for an A2 bike it is perfect uh, which brings me, I want to do a video on this because honestly I think this could be a fantastic first bike uh, a bike to learn on um, if you've just got your full license and you've never ridden a bike before this could be perfect I honestly do believe this could be a fantastic first bike gearbox for me the gearbox on this is not great I think I've been spoiled in my days Apart from the KTM, which didn't have the greatest gearbox. I've had so many times where... Hey, look at that. Actually, that's the guy I was talking to. When I said he's done 54,000 miles on it. Um, yeah, the gearbox between... God, I got Between second and third gear, when you're accelerating hard, you can't clutch... I can never say this word. Clutchless shift between second and third It doesn't like it sometimes, which is really odd. Uh, I've had a lot of times where it's jumped out of gear um, I don't know if that's just mine I've done things to try and sort it out it hasn't worked so I don't know if it's just I, I don't know if it's just me it probably is but for me the gearbox is just not that reliable um, and I like it's quite a, like a good a good clunk you get a good clunk from it but it's just I don't trust the gearbox it's better than KTM my KTMs but yeah I just I don't get on with the gearbox on this, so that's one pet peeve I have for it. Other than that, guys, I think that's most things. If you've got any questions for this bike, drop them down in the comments and I can answer as many as I can. I'll answer them all, what am I on about? I'll answer every single question you try and put out, because it is a fantastic bike, and I honestly think this could be one of the best beginner bikes you can. It's vibratier than you think, though, that's one thing. I've got these, these are the standard bar ends, but it is, you do get quite vibrations through the handlebars, uh, that's one thing to note. So it's not as smooth as you might think it is. 
I'm just going to go around you. It's torquey, it's fun. It will power wheelie in first gear if that's really what you want. And it will clutch up in second if that's really what you want. But you would be buying that bike for this. I um, think I've talked about everything I possibly can. Um, styling. Let's talk about the styling. I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that bad of a looking bike. I mean, you know me. I buy. I like my bikes to look good. And I don't think... Oh, we're talking about the handling as well. I don't think it's that bad looking. I quite like what they've done with the front end. Uh, I mean, look at me. I've even kept the original tail on it. I haven't got a tail tidy for it. Because honestly, I don't think it's that bad. Maybe it's just me getting older, but I honestly don't think this looks that bad, especially for an adventure bike. I think they've done a, quite a good job on styling it, which I think it can be quite hard for an, uh, uh, an adventure bike slash touring bike to look quite good. I think they can look quite ugly sometimes, but I think they've done quite a good job on this. Don't know what else to tell you. Uh, handling wise, it's fantastic. As I said, turning silk is amazing. Um, it's very flickable, as I said, it's very light. Quite not wide handlebars but it's very it's a very nimble bike with thinner tires um, the position you're in it's quite easy to flick in and out very good weight distribution so, uh, the suspension's amazing perfect for on road it's not race suspension don't expect it to be uh, I'm gonna go that way actually but as you can tell it's not bad. Perfect for potholes, you know, daily commuting. Because that's what this bike is for, is daily commuting and touring. And it does a fantastic job. As I said, any questions, I've probably missed this so much, as I always do. But please, ask away. Mess DM me on Instagram. <laughs> what can I say? What else? Uh, if I, On DMs, I can kind of, because it's I, I get a bit more time to think about things, I can be a bit more professional about it. And, you know, uh, when I'm talking, I'm trying to think of a hundred different things. I can kind of get distracted sometimes. But yeah, I think that's everything, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. Um, God, I've, I've got so distracted and I'm so confused now. Um, <laughs> thank you for watching the video. If you've watched all the way to the end, I appreciate you big time. Because uh, I've just mumbled on for like 20 minutes. So, yeah, as you can see, ready? I'm going to do a quick stop. Pow! I even made the ABS go stops like a dime oh yeah ain't got a problem it's a cheap bike expect cheap bits but it does a great job in everyday commuting and everything you'll ever need pretty much sums it up right uh thanks for watching uh, and stay safe out there guys peace out